The main photograph shows a jackdaw. On the left, the little video clip is a little greed. Top right is a broad-bodied chaser. Bottom right is Ariel, Ari, Araniella quadratus, which is a member of the orb web spider family. Okay, this is the fifth of my test vlogs. After this, it's it's no longer a test wildlife watching vlog. I'm not really sure what that means. You'll probably see the difference because the test ones generally are longer because I'm using old footage which I've I'd taken before um, and sort of made quite a big theme and maybe been a little bit too ambitious with some of the early ones. Okay, you're going to see the things popping in and out of the maps. So that shows you where they are. It means I don't have to keep talking about it. And I stay behind the camera and point the camera at the wildlife, which I think at least some people would agree is the correct direction to point the camera. Okay, Perbex. This this whole video actually fits in with a book I've written, but also you can just go to my blog and there's lots of free information on there as well. So you don't have to get the book, but you can if you like. Here's a Dunnock seen on the Perbex. This is a wide shot of a yellow hammer and then we're going to do a little close-up. I've found the Perbex is very good for seeing birds, especially in the little valleys between the cliffs, and especially in spring, early summer, a lot of bird activity, singing, including some migrating birds. I've even seen things like ospreys flying past, so definitely visible migration happening. Although for me, I think the highlight is the butterflies. This is bird's foot trefoil, which is an important food plant for a lot of butterflies, especially blue butterflies. For example, this is a male common blue, which I saw just below Old Harry's Rocks. Um, yeah, so this part of the coast is, fa is, is kind of pretty famous for, for butterflies, but I, I kind of lump, I consider butterflies and dragonflies to be two types of wildlife that in Britain you can see everywhere and you don't have to go to a particular place to see them. So why do I even recommend somewhere like the Perbex? Oh this is a uh, jackdaw by the way in some thrift. This is uh, this is one of the coastal views and in a moment we're going to see a peregrine flying around. Yeah, so why would I even recommend the Perbex? Well, for me, if I'm trying to find somewhere nice to go, I want a wide variety of wildlife and some scenic views and I think the Perbex really wins on that one. It's definitely a popular place to go. So I'm not the only one that thinks that. So we're, this video is looking at the um, south coast, central south coast area of England. We're about to head east from the Perbex which directly connects to Pool Harbour. And I've called this location in the Nature Travel Guide, which is the kind of name of the thing that I've created, as Pool, Bournemouth and Christchurch, which is like a large connected urban area. Lots of places to go here. See typical British wildlife, for example, at Upton Park I saw these long-tailed tits feeding. And at Upton Park I also saw a buzzard, this buzzard scavenging. And in a moment we're going to see an oyster catcher feeding, which are, um, and some black-headed gulls, which are the kind of birds that I would typically see in Pool Harbour. So, Pool Bournemouth Christchurch, I'm not sure I'd recommend it for a wildlife watching holiday. But if you're here anyway, I think the big highlights are the two harbours where maybe you might try canoeing. Um, Brown Sea Island has red squirrels. Oh, these are two green woodpeckers that I saw at Bourne Valley on Bourne Valley Greenway, which is a sort of urban kind of park area in Bournemouth. Um, uh, although my favourite of the two harbours for wildlife watching is Christchurch Harbour, I've been canoeing there, you can walk all the way around it, you've got Stampet Marsh which is a good nature reserve, and you've also got Hengersbury Head. 
So that was some wildflowers near Eiford Bridge. If you continue up this river sort of past Christchurch Harbour, it's one of the f rivers that feeds the harbour, you can see lots of wildlife, for example, this grey heron. Southbourne Clifftop, which we're going to see in a moment, we're going to see an adder, which I saw there, famously is quite good for reptiles. Others claim to have seen green lizards, which it seems like were probably released pets. I've never seen one there. I've not met anyone that's seen one there, but I have sort of read about it and heard about it. So this is a view of Hengisbury Head from Bournemouth Beach. So in the distance is Hengisbury Head, a sort of famous site. If you show just that outline to somebody that lives in Bournemouth or Christchurch, they definitely recognise it, I'm sure. Famous local landmark. And Hengisbury Head has a wide Hengisbury Head has a wide variety of habitats, including uh, the shoreline of the harbour, which is where I saw this little egret. And which is where I also saw this kingfisher. This was one of the tributary rivers that flows into Christchurch Harbour, and I saw this from the canoe. I find <laughs> I find wildlife watching by canoe is very variable. It can often I don't get noticed, so I managed to get really close to this sandwich turn. But it also means if you're not quite in the right spot, it can be quite awkward to move without drawing attention to yourself. But you can kind of drift past, and I've had, and that's how I got that really good view of the sandwich turn. Just drifted past it. Hmm. Is this my highlight? Is this my favourite spot on the south coast? It might be. It might even be my favourite spot in the whole world to go wildlife watching. Pennington Marshes. This is a young white throat that I saw one summer, right next to the car park actually, and we're about to see some spoonbill flying over and then where I saw them after they'd landed. Spoonbill are now a feature of Pool Harbour and can also be regularly seen on Pennington Marshes. In case you're wondering, these videos are not from like a single summer, I've taken these over a number of years, and in fact, because I do travel quite a lot, um, this, that, that's why it's kind of spread out. Um, I, although I have had to be quite picky actually, I had a lot of videos and this was a bit out of hand so I edited it down quite a lot. Here's a very obliging Robin. Especially if you're not watching this from Britain, then yeah, this is a popular British bird and can be very obliging. If you see Robins on the continent so in, say, France or Belgium or Germany, they'll be a, they can be very shy, much like most birds are. But in Britain, for some reason, robins seem to be very tame. When I've been gardening, I've often had them just waiting for me and then jumping into the ground where I've been digging as I take a rest. That was a red shank that we just saw feeding, and this is a little grebe. about to see a male teal swimming. And I'm going to finish off with three videos that were taken on the same day, starting off with a little egret feeding at sunset, which is why it looks a bit orangey. I think this egret is shaking the, shaking the mud with its legs to try and disturb food. Well, not there. Here it's kind of, I think it's probably running and chasing a fish, but again, can you see it's just kind of jiggling its leg around. Maybe every time it does a little run, it's because it's disturbed a fish, which is then starting to swim away. The same bird, sort of a couple of minutes later, then flew off and landed near some turnstones. Although, I think these should technically be called turn shells, so they're actually turning some shells over. I was humming and hiring, wasn't I? What's my favourite spot along this south coast? It was a difficult question to answer because I do also really love some spots in the New Forest. Let's look at a few of those. 
big issue about whether there's overgrazing or not in the new forest. I'm not going to talk about it in this video, but it's one of the many things I talk about on my blog. Sort of another little shameless plug, so follow the link in the uh, description of this video. You should be able to find it. Here's some burnt heather. Maybe this was burnt on purpose because they will try and prevent the, sh the scrub getting too out of control so that when if there is an accidental fire, it's not too serious. This is Araniella quadratus, which is a member of the orbweb spider family. I saw the, this at Hinchesley. What we've got now, basically, is a long series of videos taken from all over the New Forest. This is a broad-body chaser that I videoed at Hawk Hill. So, I'm still in the experimental phase with my wildlife watching blogs. And you see, I'm not sure, should I just, should I t describe each one, or should I just be quiet and let you watch? These are some damosel damselflies which are mating. The male is holding onto the female, so the male's the more colourful one in front. It's in the male in it's in the, the male wants to be the father of babies, genetically speaking, and so once it's found a female it's gonna hang on to it. This is a male golden ringed dragonfly. Which you can tell because well, it's a bit nerdy, but it's all to do with the the uh, amount of um the shape of the abdomen. And now this is a silver studded blue, which I saw one day. There's some good sort of spots for silver studded blue in the New Forest. This one I saw at Holmesley Railway Line. It's on some heather. Where I, on the same day actually no, no, it was a different day, but the same place, I saw this Jay. member of the crow family and here's a video of a gatekeeper butterfly which I saw at Wooten Bridge I think Wooten Bridge is a fantastic spot again go and check out my blog for more information it's um, wow I've had some really enjoyable days here I think it's a beautiful walk See, I've seen lots of dragonflies, lots of butterflies, and some good birds and flowers as well. Now looking at um, damosel damselflies. We're now going to see a silver wash fritillary, which I saw at Bewley. This is a forest species, but it will drop down to the forest floor, for example, as it did here, to uh, feed. And to finish off, we're going to see these two peacock butterflies, and then the last video is some, of some fallow deer that I saw at Denny Wood. Denny Wood is yet another spot that I really like in the New Forest. Um, I've got like three walks that end up there which I like doing. Thanks for watching this. This was number five of my five sort of tests where I was trying to learn how to make a wildlife watching vlog. I wasn't sure if I'd publish it, but I hope you've enjoyed it and thanks for watching.